Lightning Mike Burke, we are live. What's up, Eric DeVos? It's a pleasure to be able to catch up with you. And what better Man. way to do it than live? Man, it's a pleasure to have uh, me on the show. I've, it's been quite a while. It's uh, probably been, what, two, maybe three years since we've been on the show. I can't even remember how long it's been. What, what was that, episode 80, 100 or something? It couldn't have been that long ago, but it was a little bit. It had to have been at least a solid year, I would say. It's probably been two. <laughs> Could have been. Time flies. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while, man. I um, no, I appreciate you having me on, man. I, my best friend in the world, Chris Hardy, uh, was telling me he was going on your show, and I was like, bro, is this like the Chris Hardy, you know, uh, Eric DeVos show? I was like, what, when do I get back on here? And he's like, well, dude, just hit up Eric. And I was like, then he called me and you called me and I was like, man, I just honestly want to get on here and talk more about what I'm doing more than you and I. I mean, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the, the things that we're doing together and, and you're helping people. I'm helping people. And uh, we started this little thing called Tent Rescue, man. Yeah. And I actually have the video um, queued up. So as you know, at some point the video doesn't have uh, audio to it. So I just figured you would provide a narrative over the video, kind of walk us uh, through. Yeah, I guess that. Mike, I don't know what was sent to you. I asked Micah, our producer, to uh, send you a few things and I have no idea what he sent you. It's solid. It's just basically, well, you'll watch it live and just talk us through it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds um, good. All right. So yeah, let's pull it up and let's rock and roll. So... So there's no audio, so go ahead. And we can rewind, right, so, we can pause, whatever you need. So this is an overview of a shop called Peaches, Peach and Cake. Uh, they're in Florence, Kentucky. Uh, that's the building. And um, Andrew Rosani, was it Rosano? Rosano uh, reached out to us. And uh, he's never owned a business before. Um, he tinted windows for a shop and he just basically took this building the way it was. This is the waiting room and um, it's way down a hall. Um, it's really, he, he didn't have a plotter. Uh, he was hand cutting. Um, his, basically that's all he ever knew how to do was hand cut. He's never, never really used a plotter. So I got him a plotter, new signs, new POS systems, um, processes in place. We got hexagon lighting, new floors, tore down walls, uh, just went in and totally destroyed the the building and um, and just remade the whole thing over, man. And that, that whole place looks totally different. Like it's been gutted. Um, when you see the before and after, it, like he, we now have big, huge rolling uh, peel boards. Um, he's no longer doing wraps. He's no longer doing motors. We're going to start doing paint protection. Uh, he was detailing. We're now doing ceramic coating. We have isolated bays. Um, he basically had a window that he was working off of and hand cutting. Um, I mean, the guy's an amazing guy. His father passed away about three weeks after they opened and his father owned a painting company and uh, his father was going to run the business side of it, answer the phone, deal with the customers, pay the bills. And um, this kid, and I call him a kid, he's in his early twenties. So I'm 50 years old. So anybody in their twenties, I guess is a kid to me. Um, just an amazing story, amazing experience. This is a life changing thing for, for Andrew. Um, he had a thousand dollars in his bank account when he reached out to us and he had two of his friends working in the shop, trying to help him. I think they just replayed it. It's a, it's a replay now. Yeah. So continue on. He just had two of his friends working. So to give you a little bit of backstory, um, I'll finish up what I was saying there, but he had two of his friends in the shop uh, that were kind of helping him out detailing cars. They, they're tuner guys. They really love cars. Um, so they were, you know, working on rims, mechanic work, intakes, uh, seats, anything people just needed done to cars. They were kind of doing just for side money after hours. It was more of a hangout um, trying to just generate any revenue. I mean, the building had cost. You know, it has power, has utilities, a huge building. I mean, it's like a 4,000 square foot facility. Um, he had a dream of getting his own tent shop. He worked at a tent shop. He was, I guess, moonlighting is what they would say, uh, out of his garage, um, his father's uh, garage at his house. And his dad kept coming home from work and seeing cars lined up in the driveway and lined up on the street. And he's like, 
how many cars you got to tent tonight, son? And he's like, I got two or three more. And he was tenting until 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, a couple nights a week. And on the weekends when he got off work, he was tenting buddies' cars. And he built up a name for himself. And his father and Andrew um, had this saying between themselves. His dad was a handyman, could do electrical work, do painting. He basically could do anything. His dad was a remarkable human being. Um, Didn't have a lot of resources financially. So I guess he was just a hard worker and they did the best they could. Um, But the father could do anything and help build the shop. But his dad quit his job to come help him get this store open and help him run it. And then three weeks later, his father passed away. And then they reached out to us or not. They Andrew reached out to us and tentrescue.com. We got some inquiries in. I read the story. I called him immediately and said, hey, when can we fly up there and take a look at this? Um, and when Josh Popnick was down, he's, he's a really good close friend of mine, ambitious, driven. Um, he's the Grant Cardone, the young Grant Cardone of the window tending industry and um, just killing it in Pittsburgh. He's got a new store in Miami, about to open up a new one in a city I can't say, uh, but just all over the place and uh, very ambitious, very driven. Uh, and he came down to Charlotte to visit me on some business opportunities that him and I were working on and um, had him on my podcast and told him about Tent Rescue. And he's like, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get it going. And uh, so he kind of lit the fire under me to get this going. This has been an idea of mine for forever. And I've always wanted to, to give back and put some structure in place for, for tent shops. Um, it's a low cost of entry point to get in, into the window tinting industry or window tinting business. You need a couple rolls of film, a small shop, and you can kind of limp into this business. And a lot of guys that are really good at tinting windows aren't always good at running a business. And they don't see the big picture, the you know things it takes to run the business correctly, like P&Ls, accounting, taxes, insurances, um, just how to run the business to where you know – what you can manage from day to day, week to week, month to month, what you need to budget. A lot of them make a little bit of money in the summer. They go buy a new truck, they buy a boat. And the next thing you know, in the winter, they're broke. Um, so they mismanage money and it's not to their fault. It's just, they've never managed money before. Um, but Andrew is, is doing well, man. He ran this entire business off a of Facebook page and the name of his business was called peach and cake. Um, and it came from a piece of cake. Um, his father, getting back to the story I was saying about his father, he was a handyman that could do anything. And he would always ask his dad, hey, dad, do you think you could do this? And he would say, oh, man, piece of cake. Oh, man, piece of cake. So anything he asked his father, his father's response his entire life was, oh, piece of cake. So there was no problem. His father always had this chill piece of cake. So he said, man, if I ever open up a tent shop, I'm going to call it peach and cake. Um, and that's basically what he did and i told him it was uh, cool but not the uh way to go on um so what are you looking up here so this is it yeah peach and cake yeah. window tinting. Pe- peach and cake window tinting slash sun stoppers so what That's we it. did is when we first went there um he did not have a website uh, uh-huh. so we turned around and added him to sunstoppers.com <clears throat> And within the very first day of Josh Popnick, Michael Dobbins from Expel, myself, um, we went there and we added him onto the website just to get him an email address. So he's Mm -hmm. got Andrew at sunstoppers.com. We can start doing organic leads. And within six hours, Eric, six hours, we had an organic lead for window tinting. And he's averaging four to six organic window tinting leads a day right now off our website. Nice. So we've doubled sales and we haven't even gone live yet. I can send you some pictures of the remodel. It's all Sunstoppers. Everything's Sunstoppers. All new display boards, all new front counters, all new signs. I mean, it's night and day. So, okay. So built up some questions here. Sure. That I have at least. Um, Well, first of all, so when Andrew found you, um, do you happen to know, was he like, did he 
see that you posted about Tint Rescue or was he like searching for something like that and he came across you? How did how did that, you know, because it's it's the first one and it seems like it's almost like the universe came together at the right time, right? I mean. It, it really did. Um, right after I did the podcast with Josh, I was kind of amped up and motivated and excited. And, I, and Josh and I asked each other, he said, how are, do we get our message out there? I said, don't worry, man. I'm about to go shoot a live video in my office and I'm just going to tell everybody what I'm doing. And I posted it on um, a couple of the Facebook groups and uh, put a link. I, I literally called my web developer and within 24 hours, we had tentrescue.com website up. Like it was just a basic little page, tentrescue.com. There wasn't very much to it, um, but it was just enough to get the website up, tentrescue.com. And we just built a landing page for, you know, anyone to put their information in. And we've gotten, I can't even tell you how many people have put their information in for us to, to look at. How many? A lot. <laughs> Here's the website. Um, yep. Obviously, you've built it out since that first one page because there's a lot more to it now. Oh, um, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I, gonna, it's no, I mean, it's uh, it looks really I mean, good, it, obviously. It was literally we put that's the little message right there. That yep. was the message I sent. Bye. And uh, we just basically wanted to create a little uh, collaboration. Uh, Josh has helped me out in the very first uh, organization of getting things going. Uh -huh. uh, he's so busy with his schedule. I took over from there. Um, so I think in the future, what I'm going to do is get consultants for every show. Um, ask some of the, the bigger shops in the country. Um, Josh was like, Hey man, this is your idea. It was your baby. I'd love to be a part of it. I'm glad I helped you out. He's like, I've just, he's got a big business to run too. We sometimes in our entrepreneur spirit, try to take on more than we're really are capable you know, we're, we're having dinner, having a couple of drinks and we're like, yeah, let's go all in. Let's do it. And then sure. a week later you go look at your schedule and you're like, when am I going to have time to do this? So when are you going to have time to do this? What is the planned schedule? What is like, how long do you foresee this filming to take until the world is presented with the first show? Or is it going to be a lot of shows? Is it one show or is it okay, so like a series? What, what we've decided is we've flown to Florence um, with uh, Josh, myself, and, a, and his producer at the very first time, because my producer, Michael, was on a shoot with NASCAR, so he couldn't come. So we went up there, did the basic evaluation of what was going on so we could get a game plan of what to do. So we met, got a story, um, did a lot of, I guess, what you call pre-shooting um, and collaboration, brainstorming. We did that for a day and a half. Um, Josh was in town for a day. I was in town for a day. We flew back the next day, um, came up with a game plan. Micah, my videographer, producer, um, some of my staff members, we came up and we did a 3D drawing of the facility. We did um, a layout of what we were going to tear, what walls down, counters. Uh, we, we have a 3D rendering of what we, what we were going to do. And so we started ordering things. Um, signs graphics cards square equipment plotters film from expel display boards our pricing boards uh, website stuff that we're working on photography uh, so we came in and shot that day and we have another shoot that we came in and do the the final makeover of okay. the beginning the tear down the the makeover and then we're gonna have the re-grand opening um, so we've got two more shoots that we're going to finish up and we're in the final phases of it right now. Um, we're looking at midsummer launching a show, a TV show. And this is going to be, we have some, I can't really say exactly what we have, but we have some people in the national, I'm just going to say all the platforms that are okay. interested in taking a look at the show as a pilot, um, you know, expels a big backer of, of, of Sunstoppers we're partners and uh, they're like, whatever you're doing, we want to be involved in. So I don't know what all the role they're going to play, but they've been amazing. Whatever I needed, whatever I wanted, it was there the next day. So the question was asked by Mary and how is it all funded? So how is it all funded? Me. 
Cool. So you're like the work 20, that's going into the renovations into, so the video, there's the videographer or videography and production of the show. And then there's the, obviously like the actual money that goes into the shop. Yes. And, and the is, travel and the airfare and the sure. hotels, all me. It's all Sunstoppers and Mike Burke. And then do you, so with that sort of investment into the shop, is there any ongoing participation by you after the show is over? Yes. Growth. Okay. Um, <laughs> I get, you know, I'm just, I, I He's guess not doing question. pay protection right now. He's not doing residential commercial. There's endless amounts of possibilities. I'm not worried about the finances. The finances are a piece of cake. Like he said, piece of cake. But uh, I mean, this like, is if the investment just like, hey, I'm putting this money into the shop and I'm going to get a, an episode out of it. Or is that be, like, that's now a sun stopper. So I guess that's that, right? It's like, it's like right. an example of what you can do. And that's where the maybe investment so, becomes even extra worth it, right? So giving you kind of the breakdown, step one, step two, step three of my brain of what this I'm, our sun stoppers, what I'm getting out of it, what he's getting out of it. Here's a, here's a guy who had a thousand dollars in his bank account, trying to keep his doors open, living paycheck to paycheck. Within the last two months, I've already with the help of sun stoppers and our staff and what we're capable of doing quadrupled his, his sales already process salesmanship, the texting software, all the things that we do to engage with customers. Um, we do Google ads, we do Facebook ads. We do all that for him on the back end. That's what Sunstoppers does. We're a lead generation company. That's really what we are. We have so many leads coming in off sunstoppers.com that we're giving them away for free online. We're like, we don't have a location in this area and we get Tesla leads and pay protection leads all over the country. We're a national company now. And what I want out of this is to show everyone what Sunstoppers can really do. The fuel, the amount of fuel that we really can pour in and help the smaller little independent shops now become part of the big boys. They just need a little coaching. They just need a little guidance. They need a big brother. And I just want to come in and be a big brother to them and help them. And Andrew is now a lifelong friend. Like this is now a friendship that I'm going to have forever. This guy is now part of my family. I mean, he, we've cried together. Um, we've, we've hugged. I mean, this guy is an amazing guy. Like I didn't just do this because I want to do a TV show. I did this because this guy is a genuinely awesome human being. It's, I mean, it's like, like I said, the universe almost brought the timing together. It it's really did. But it, it the, there's some fortune in it, you know? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the funding, we're fortunate enough, the Sunstoppers, to be a very profitable company to where I have the advertising budgets to do things like this. And I'm having fun, man. At the end of the day, man, I'm freaking having fun. I love to renovate things and tear walls down, paint. I mean, to see everyone smile. I mean, who doesn't like a house being made over? Who doesn't like the house being repainted? Who, who doesn't like to walk in and see, boom. Like, it's incredible. The feeling is incredible. It's contagious. Every one of his staff members is now getting up early, coming to work, can't wait to come to work. They're excited to come to work. They're making more money. It's, it's a win, 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 win. So once the episode, is it likely to be one episode that starts at the beginning and ends at the... Um, it's going to be one show, like when you watch like Bar Rescue, right. you're going to watch like that show, you're going to see the beginning, you're going to see the middle, you're going to see the end, and you're going to see the whole timeline all in one show. And then would you expect it to be about 30 minutes or an hour or who knows? We haven't decided that. Like it, We know that 30 to 40 minutes is what shows are usually with commercials. So we're trying to do around 30 to maybe 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay. And then once this show goes live... I imagine you said you already got a lot of inquiries to be on. I'm, I'd imagine we already, have the, sec we already have the second one picked out. Okay. So the second one's already picked out. Have you started on it or you're going to wait until this is done until to get that? We, we want to learn enough from the first one, what to do different on the second one. So we know how to save time flying okay. here, flying there, getting hotel rooms, getting this. Like we need a lot of pre-production a little bit more so I can have dual my homework 
instead of just ordering this, ordering this, ordering this, like we all got excited and I was ordering signs. I'm ordering this and my staff is ordering this. And next thing you know, did that come in yet? No, that didn't come in yet. And then we're scheduling flights, uh, you know, so when are we going to do the demo? When are we going to do renovations? When's the construction crew coming in? All that stuff takes a lot of planning and a lot of timing. And then as best as you can imagine, obviously you can't quite predict because you don't know the distribution. If it gets picked up, doesn't get picked up. But if the best you can imagine today, how many of these episodes do you think we'll see in the next 12 months? From Tent Rescue? Yeah. I'm really honestly to be very truthful too. Okay. The first one and the second one that you already have. Yeah, because I want to get two done before the end of the year and say, okay, let if the first one didn't get picked up, we'll do a second one to see what they liked or didn't like. Okay. And then we can kind of tweak the formula and say, okay, do you need two cups of sugar, one cup of sugar? <laughs> so there's a big emphasis on this getting picked up, the distribution of this. Yes. Um, which obviously is would be such an enormous impact for the industry as a whole. Yeah, Josh has a couple of connections with a few of your major players. I have a few. I have a guy here in Charlotte that I've known forever who is um, really close friends. I can't say what the number one basketball player in the world is, uh, but he's really close friends with that guy, and they have a production company in California. Very cool. So we've got connections. We all have connections. We all know people, but people talk, and whether they're going to do it or not is – and whether they pick it up or not, it, it, I would still continue to probably do one or two a year. I mean, the upside for Sunstoppers is just incredible. I mean, I, I don't want to go buy a bunch of tent shops. I want to partner with people who want to grow. If you want to grow your business and don't have the capital to do it, call me. I'm not going to take your money. I'm going to help you make more. Okay, so let's go through a phone call like that. Sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> I'm calling to speak to, is this Lightning Mike Burke? This is Mike Burke. It depends on who's talking to me, if they can call me Lightning Mike or not. Okay. Is this Mike, this Mike Burke of Sunstoppers, the founder of Sunstoppers and Tint Rescue? Yes, sir, it is. I saw you last night on Tint Wisdom. You mentioned if I, I people that want to grow their business, but maybe don't have the capital should call you. Yes. Um, you know, I, I want to grow the business. Tell me how you can help. Um, I don't have a lot of money in the bank, but I do have a lot of ambitions. Sure. It's just me tinting, and sure. I've been doing it for a few years now. I want to take sure. it to the next level. So the questions that I will ask is you just answered one. Number one is how many employees do you have? And you just said one, you. Okay. I may or may not be able to help you, to be perfectly honest with you, because you're not quite out of the box enough for me to help you. So more than likely, I'm going to say I can't help you. Okay, so let's do a new ring, 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 ring. Okay. You know, um, tell me a little about your company. Well, it's me, my brother, his fiance is an admin, and then we have a new installer we're training, and then we also have a new admin we're training, but both of them just started last week. So it's like five of us, but we're really just getting our feet wet into having so many people because... I've been doing this for eight years, me and my brother, but until now it was just us two. And now we have five. So what can you okay, do? To, I'm worried about payroll. To go a little bit less than what you just described. Okay. I'm going to give you the, you just said the first phone call was one guy, right? By himself. Ten. Okay. If he, in a few years, if he hasn't hired a receptionist or a helper or someone to kind of assist him, then he's not ready to grow. So to my, in my mindset, as I would coach him and say, hey, schedule a one hour coaching call with me and let me take you through the steps of what I think you need to be doing on the one employee. And when you get past a few of those steps, call me back and then we can have another call to say, OK, where are you now? And then we can now move forward with some of those steps. Okay. That's the first, that's the one man operation. What I personally love is the guy that's been tending windows for three to five years. Who's not doing paint protection. Who's not doing ceramic coating and he's not doing residential commercial tenting. He's a tent shop. Okay. That's the perfect formula to me because the guy's got the heart and the love of window tent in his heart. He, I want to make sure that he knows how to hand cut a little bit. So he's more of an artist. So he has a, a craftsmanship to himself. If he's just a guy that uses a plotter, 
has been like a production tenor at a dealership and then he kind of started up on his own, then we're going to have to brush him up into getting him into hand cutting and getting him into more of that. So I've got to coach the labor side of it. And that's what I don't want to do. I don't want to coach the owner of the business in the labor side. He's got to already master the labor side. And if they master the labor side, I can help with the structure of what you need in your business to sustain itself. So you can exit as the laborer to go and now go do residential commercial tenting. Now you can hire a paint protection installer. And what I always say, and I don't know if I said this in other podcasts, but there's an investor mentality and you have to pick which hat you're going to wear every day. Are you, you know, as a, as an entrepreneur, you're doing the advertising, you're doing the bookkeeping, you're trying to figure out who you order t-shirts from that lady went out of business. You're ordering, you're trying to find somebody else to get t-shirts for you. You you're answering the phone, you're returning emails at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night while you're having a beer on the back porch, trying to schedule work for tomorrow. There's just a lot of hats that the entrepreneur is, is doing. Now, if he doesn't have structure in place, that's what I can come in and help. He doesn't know how much money he made. He doesn't know what his P&L is. He doesn't know what his film cost is. He doesn't know what his labor cost is. He doesn't know what his overhead is. If you don't have those numbers, data doesn't lie. If you don't have the data to support it and you're pocketing cash and all you're doing is pocketing cash and then you went and bought a truck that you can't afford because in the summer you had a good summer and then all of a sudden October, November, December, you're, you, you can't even make the payment on the truck because you've got to make the payment of the rent on the building. I like about a three-man operation that's got about five years experience who is looking for growth, who is looking to say, hey, our sales are the same as they were last year. Our phone's ringing off the hook. I can barely answer it. I'm, I'm capped out at seven cars a day. You know, I'm not working Saturdays till two because my daughter's doing dance and I've got to be out of here at one. I'm trying to find that guy that's kind of hit that kind of every day. He's just hitting that roadblock. And then I can go, okay, what do you need? Let me dissect your business. Let me get a second set of eyes. So as a coach in football, you have the sideline coaches. You have the guys on the, the, the sideline, the head coach. He's there watching the game, right? But if you notice when you watch TV, like college football and NFL, they go back up to the booth, and the like offensive coordinator is sitting up in a booth, and then there's another coach up there in the booth, and he's relaying information back and forth because now he can see down on the field and see the whole field. So when I come in to see a business, I can evaluate it from the whole field, I'm not looking at it right here. Like he sees it every single day. I can go in, okay, who's answering the phone? What's your response rate? What's your close rate? How many leads are you coming? I mean, people are always saying, I got the phone ringing off the hook. What's your close rate? Like if you're tinting windows and have a heat gun in your hand. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. How you doing, man? I like to get one of those today. Okay, cool. You know, and you hear a heat gun running. That's 90% of our industry, man. Yeah. Well, I don't know about the percentage, but I know that's that's a it's lot. It's a high percentage. It's a probably high, right. I'm, I'm exaggerating. It's a high percentage. I'm just being exaggerating. But you're right. Um, just being on the phone is it takes your attention, and you need to do it in a consistent way and the right way, and that makes the big difference between whether you're just answering the phone or whether you're in taking a lead and having a, a process and and converting and hopefully get converting better and better. Well, we've noticed that emails you know emails the response rate is 24 to 48 hours a text is 70 to 90 seconds so if you have an information system that collects data or you have a lead generation form where the customer can put their name their address their phone number their email address and you have a, a form on your website that you can generate the the input that input can go into a system that can automatically send text messages to the customer we have an AI system that automatically does it and closes it and books the appointment for you. You can, it's automation. And that's where I think the future is going is automation. People want to book their appointments online. I mean, have you ever booked a doctor appointment online or on an app or anything like that? I don't go to the doctor very much, but I mean, I, any, anything. I just like booked anything. a veterinary appointment on the uh, internet. When yeah. I was at XTC, we were doing some breakout sessions and, um, uh, Everyone was like, yeah, man, I, I, my barber, I booked my appointment with my barber on, on like an app on my phone and, you know, scheduling like yeah, most yeah. of the world, like massages, uh, barbers, you know, even your oil change on your car at the dealership, you can schedule it online. 
mm-hmm. the world's going online. Yeah, food. I mean, food, you can go. Sure. I mean, you can go eat and say, "Hey, I want to go at seven o'clock tonight," and I walk in the door and they have your table ready. For sure. You know, one of the interesting or differences, subtle differences of scheduling window film or paint protection versus a haircut or maybe uh, food would be with food. You know, I typically know what I'm craving. I'm looking for a pizza, maybe some Chinese, whatever it is. I'm looking for it. I'm finding the best one. I'm ordering it. I know what I want Um, with a haircut. You know, it's probably the same barber week after week. I get a fresh fade before tint wisdom. And um, you're looking, you're looking fresh, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You're you. looking fresh. Thank you. Um, however, with window film, you know, it's possibly something that somebody's going to do every three to five years at best. It might be their first time. It might be their third or fourth, but the first time um, with the potential of being upsold, you know, it's, I think it's a little bit of a different experience. Of course, I agree you have to capture the lead, but I don't know that when we talk about self-scheduling of barber appointments or food, it's the same as self-scheduling with, window film just because people don't necessarily know what they want yet. Um, But I do agree, obviously, there is that we're in that gray period right now where you want as much automation as possible, but you still want to keep that closing percentage and that personal touch. And it's up to the business to do what works for them. What do you think? You know, you've made a lot of good valid points and I'm not going to argue them, but I'm going to add to a different perspective. Okay. I've, been personally window tinting since 1988. If you look at the window automotive, I'm, I'm, I'm classifying this as the automotive window tinting experience. The automotive window tinting experience from 1988 to 2023, we're still in like 1990, 2000. We have to jump forward to 2023. And what I see is a system that I'm working on now called Sunstoppers Express. And Sunstoppers Express is going to be no front counter person, no phone in the shop, pay online, book your appointment online. You have two options. It's going to be auto tent only. And they're going to be an express auto tent. It's going to be two tenters in the back. And we're just going to tent cars. We're going to book appointments. And here's the schedule. And you pay online. There's going to be no collecting of money. We have a DocuSign, that's your your contract. We have a video that explains which tent you want, shows the heat lamp demonstration with different things in front of it, and says, hey, and we give a a self-explanation, maybe a 30-second saying, hey, if this was my car and you were driving a car XYZ, we would probably steer you to go here. If you're driving a car XYB, go here, okay? And we're going to have, you know, your basic four-door car, your basic trucks, Things can be sold a little bit in the shop, but we want everything to be bought online, paid for online, your appointment set online with a deposit. And this is a concept I'm working on that is going to be launched in a brand new store, a brand new facility. And I'm working on that in Texas right now. Very cool. Very, very cool. What city in Texas? I, I have a shop in Fort Worth, Texas in Keller, and I bought a home there in December. Um, so, so probably around that area somewhere. It's, it's somewhere near there. Super cool. What do you think? Obviously, like, you know, that's, um, that's, you know, like, have you been in a crumbles cookie shop? You know, yes. they have a lot of that vibe, right? Like you can walk up to a, the square reader, you can type in the cookies and potentially you see yourself on the screen, you pick them up, you didn't have to talk to anybody, least anxiety interaction possible. Um, well, just not to cut you off on that, no. but you said anxiety, women, that get their windows tinted in our, in our facilities sometimes feel uncomfortable. Potentially they could, I definitely think certain shop environments uh, lend themselves to that, but definitely I think the, the newer, or maybe like more, not, it's not even just newer. Like I think it's just the, the culture has moved to that's not really going to work anymore. Like you can't have that sort of harsh, you know, it used to be a thing where like, I feel like I, I haven't really heard or felt this vibe any, anymore in years but i feel like there was always this vibe where women felt like they for cars women felt like they were going to get a higher price quoted to them than men like if, if their husband called the price would be cheaper than if they called if they called the tinter on the other end of the line would probably be a guy who's going to take advantage of them like and you know i don't think that that vibe just has nowhere in business in 2023 anymore you it know? doesn't um I know I said this, I think 10 years ago, I was renovating one of the Sunstopper shops 
and I spent a ton of money on the bathroom. Like yeah. I put really cool toilet tile. I, I really painted it looking nice, new sink. And everybody in the shop was like, what are you doing? Man, it's just a tent shop. And I said, listen here, if my mother cannot come in here and feel comfortable going to the bathroom, number one, number two, I have an executive downtown that maybe works at one of the banks, an executive that walks in who's yeah. a little bit particular about his cars. And he walks in to use the bathroom at my, at my facility. And he goes in and he looks how clean and organized and how beautiful it is. And he comes out. He is going to 1,000% his car is in good hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's that restaurant kind of comparison. It's bathroom shows what you're about, bathroom, right? If the man. bathrooms are clean, you know. If they're dirty, yes. crappy, yeah. ask for talk. Come on, man. That's what you're going to be doing in the back. That's the person that's then walking potentially getting in the, your car with shoes to get that back window or something. Could it be yeah. as gross as that? What do you think timeline something? Cause it's obviously an ambitious goal to set something up like that. What do you think timeline is that sometime in 2023, 24, could it be 25? How far out do you put this? What's that? Sunstoppers express. Oh, this year. Okay. So 2023 is going to be. Yes. Can I, is it going to be like brand new real estate? Yeah. And I asked that because I could see if it was like a new build, you have the opportunity to really set the the vibe of like what something like that might, you know, be able to, to draw. We've got a location that we found that's perfect. We're working and negotiating some things. I don't know if it's going to work out. It's a private equity company that okay. owns the real estate. So we're. So it could be a new build. Well, they're wanting in on the game and I'm not willing to let them get in on the game. So. Got it. But what do you like? Got it. So they're only giving up the property if they get a percentage potentially of the business. But, um, but we've got multiple yeah. locations. We're scout scouting out. Um, I, I know this will work uh, because in, and the reason I have the data to support this is we close. I can't even tell, I'm not going to tell you the percentage, but we close a high percentage of our business What's and, never talk, to, and never talk to the Next. customer. Just flex on us. We want to hear the percentage. We never talk to the customer. Sure. Yeah. And they're I mean, booked. And we're yeah. talking $900 on Teslas for tent with customers that are tech based. Yeah. They're tech. I'm not going to say which class of customer this is, but everyone that's listening to this can kind of read through the lines that they kind of know what type of customer this is. Mm -hmm. It's um, It's something that the future is now calling for. People live on their computers, man. They live on their phones and they want to, Hey, if you want something, they want to buy it. Now I can send money to you, cash app it. I can Zelle technology. How do, you, but how do you feel about that? Cause I feel like if we go back to previous tent wisdoms, as long as they may have been, I remember you kind of making a point to say you were a man without a computer. You were a person who didn't really want to be writing the email. You could have somebody else write the email. You could kind of not deal yeah, with it. I still don't app. own a computer. I have lots of staff that owns computer and I'm like, no, no, I'm just saying like, I'm almost wondering like if, if you feel like maybe, you know, I had a question that I was waiting to ask you and I guess this maybe puts it into perspective. Sure. Um, what have like, the question was basically in the last year, if you only go back 12 months, what's the biggest lesson you've either learned brand new or has kind of stood out to you? Maybe it's something you already knew, but it kind of stood out as something that became extremely valuable in that 12 months. So it kind of, I guess, I was wondering if that may be one of them because to hear you praise how everybody's on a computer all day, I didn't know if maybe you were like, I've also been stuffing my face in a computer in the last 12 months or something like that. My circle of influence has changed. Um, I've realized what I want out of this world and who I want to be associated with. And I've kept my circle very, very tight and I'm not trying to win a popularity contest um, with anyone. I'm more in a battle with myself. I mean, every single day I'm trying to become a better version of myself. I want 2.0 tomorrow. I want 2.1, 2.2. I'm constantly absorbing information and trying to become a better Mike Burke every day. And I'm listening more. I don't have all the right answers every day. I don't always have the right answers, but I know people who do. And I have such a good tight inner circle now. And Chris West, 
um, from Expel is one of my dearest friends. We're, we're very tight. We've been to Germany. We've been to, um, we just got back from Japan. <laughs> we were just in Japan. Um, Chris Hardy has been one of my mentors. I mean, he's a, a phenomenal guy. Um, I've got a lot of guys within Expel who have really helped um, guide me and give me some, you know, Eric Cummings. Um, the Expel family and myself have just really unified ourselves, and I've learned so much from them and their structure and how they do things. And I've implemented a lot of those processes into how I handle my day to day. Um, so just being around really good people who have a vision. And um, I'm going to make a quote from Marco. You know, Marco? Marco, uh, of course, the film trainer. So, yeah. So Marco, <laughs> he chatted with me the other day. And um, actually, I just talked to Carlos for an hour and a half the other day. Texas Tentmaster called me and him and I talked. And uh, it was really good conversation. And he was coming back to expel. And um, we were talking about some of the things he's learned in the last 12 months, like you just said, some of the things I've learned in the last 12 months. And he said, expel is just a room of killers. Um, that's what Marco said to me. He said, dude, he said, that company and the people there are just a room of killers. What's that? Carlos? Yeah. So when I heard that, I was just like Matt Moreau, the vice president, just rode um, a, a I don't even, I don't even know if they, what they call it. A hundred mile. What's that? And he won it. And this dude yeah. just started training. Number one out of 2,500 people in San Antonio yeah. two weeks ago, hundred mile race. I believe he had come in maybe 10th place the year prior. And right. this is amongst professionals, semi-professionals. I mean, just right. it's, it's a big deal. It's part of, Right. It's part of like the Tour de France situation. Yes. There's not a yes. ton of them. There's a few in the U.S. and then right. they're out throughout Europe. And he took first place after riding for maybe three years or so and just saying, I want to not only do well at this, I don't want to just do well or excel. I want to be the best. And he was able to come in number one and indisputably is the best um, in at least out of that twenty five hundred that day. When I came to XTC. I gave him a hug. He texted me the same day. I texted him, congratulations, texted me back. I mean, this guy's got so much passion. Uh, everyone thinks I have passion and determination. I'm I'm a fraction of what Matt Moreau is. Like, I mean, when so, I get around him, it's 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 incredible. So circling back to that question and, and your answer, um, would it be fair to say, or what in your own words would you say, like the way I heard it was in the last 12 months, if you know something you maybe benefited you or you learned or reflected on was the circle of influence that you're around and the effects that that circle then has on you and obviously all the things you do and, and everybody. And in this case, it was a lot of the leadership at Expel. Yeah. So traveling with Chris West to Germany to help with efficiency at the Porsche um, manufacturing plant last year, we spent, you know, two weeks there. We spent a week in, in London uh, going around the UK, traveling around the shops. Um, we went to Guadalajara, Mexico and did some things together. Um, Expels just welcomed me into their family as their, as one of their own. Um, and I'm honored and I'm so thankful because that's a dream is to travel the world with the people that you care about. And when we're spending nights and nights and nights talking and learning from each other and I get to pick his brain and he gets to pick my brain and then he's going back up to write a report in his room and it's three o'clock in the morning because it's nine o'clock or 10 o'clock or mid you know day in the u.s and we're traveling all over the place and i'm seeing how hard he works i'm seeing how hard hardy works i'm seeing how hard everybody works when all i do is work and these guys work we play but we work and we work so much more efficiently throughout the day, but those relationships, man, they're so invaluable. And I've learned an amazing amount from so many different people traveling the world, man. And the U S is a great place. But there are some great countries with great people all over the world, man. And they tint windows and do paint protection and they want to be like us. It's like when I get there, they're just picking my brain and talking to me all day about ideas because they're kind of where we were 10 years ago. I mean, the UK is not where the US is in paint protection and flat glass, uh, residential home and office 
you know, buildings, they're not an automotive tent that much at all. And their paint protection business in overseas, those guys do it right, man. And they want to be like us. What's that? How so? You said they do it right. Like, how what, so? what I mean by doing it right is they charge the value of their time. They don't worry about competition at all. They um, have stores that are just meticulous. You know, you could go to the Days Inn, you can go to the Holiday Inn, you can go to the West Inn, you can go to the Ritz Carlton. Most of the, I guess, shops or facilities I saw overseas were as close to the West Inn and the Ritz Carlton I could ever see. Lighting, floors, jacks, drains, just the amount of financial um, input that they had to put into the infrastructure of these buildings is it's like uh, PFS. It's like the higher end guys in the U.S. These guys are all at that level. It's, it's incredible. They have nice facilities over there. And in, in your opinion, is that necessarily where you feel like the U.S. will end up as well? Or do you not? Because, you know, obviously there's different countries are not like they don't do it up so well. And, but I know what you're saying. And we're kind of in the U.S. almost in the middle. We have some on the lower end. We have some on the super high end. Um, do you think we're headed one direction or the other, or how do you see the US I think we market? need them all. I mean, you know, McDonald's and Wendy's are, are needed, okay? And Subways are needed, and Outback is needed. You know, Ruth not really. Some of those are going out of business bad, man. They might be. I don't know. Uh, they're not needed anymore. I don't think any different... things needed or Outback. <laughs> I, I, I don't eat a lot of fast food, kidding. so I'm just saying that there's different levels of yeah, yeah. You know, paint protection is a different animal than window tent. And what I was getting back to earlier, just to revisit something we talked about earlier, when you said that the Sunstoppers Express, um, window tinting has been around. I mean, auto tinting, what, 35, 40 years? I mean, let's say 40 years, maybe, right? Mid 80s? Yeah. yeah. So when you said people are getting their windows tinted for the first time, that's marginal to me. I don't see a lot of because you're assuming they were even alive in the eighties. So there's people that are becoming drivers that were born after 2000. You're, I know okay, what you're valid, saying. I'm just valid. saying like, okay. it's, it's not something that many people have a flavor for. So if you walked up to random strangers and you said, what bagel do you like? Or where's, where do you like to get pizza? They're going to tell you. If you say, what type of hair could you get? They're going to tell you. If you say, what type of window film do you have in your car? What shade was it? where do you get it done? It's not going to like roll off their tongue if they even not wrong. It, right. You're not wrong. I think That's what all. I needed to say was the awareness of window tent. People know what it is. Sure. Of course people know what it is. Yeah. I think you're you know in a hole if you don't know what window tent is at all at that point. Correct. Yeah. And the younger generation, my son's 18 and he's been tenting since he was 13, 14 years old. He's tending at least one or two cars every afternoon at my shop from friends that he went to high school with. They're, I mean, he's constantly doing cars. Like he's dad. I got a buddy. Dad, I got a buddy. He's I'm a like, tent plug for that whole age demographic, probably in your city. He is. Um, but most of them know what they want. It's like when they come in the door, they want five percent. They want this. They know what they want, and that's why I think the tent yeah. express model is very going to be. I'm not trying to appeal to the hundred percent of the market. I'm trying sure. to appeal to that market place that it can be a volume in and out, lower overhead, lower uh, transition cost as far as from the front counter to this book appointment, come in, this is your film. You have two choices. You want this one or this one. That's it. These are the prices. They're non-negotiable. They're non-negotiable. These are your prices. You either want them or you don't. Yeah. Well, I look, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It sounds like the fact that you're even looking at building new real estate alone is insane because you know, that alone, it just has so much potential in the uh, look and branding that I'm sure you'll bring to it. So i um, looking forward to seeing it come out. I love what I do, man. I wake up every single day with a smile on my face to help other people and to tent windows, man. Um, I love it. I still tent windows. I still do paint protection. I still get in there and grind. Um, it's, it's fun. I mean, does anybody have any questions for me on, on tent rescue or any of the things that we've talked about so far? Ooh. Um, I, I did. I tried to squeeze them in, but obviously, if anybody has any questions, ask I would them love now. To. I but, would love um, to to see what anybody need has to say and and talk and answer some questions. So, 
When was the first Sunstoppers? It was a transition from Lightning Mics to Sunstoppers. So the very first Sunstoppers was about 18 years ago, maybe 19 years ago. And um, our, we, I had sold Lightning Mics due to health issues. I was having anxiety, uh, had some health issues. I sold Lightning Mics. I started an advertising business called Pinpoint Advertising. And then I moved, sold my house, sold my business, sold my cars. And my son was born. He's 18, almost 19. So this is the only way I know how to remember these dates is through my son. Uh, he's about to turn 19 in June. And right after he was born, we bought a house down at the beach. And I started Sunstoppers. And I did it because we were doing these mailers. They were like clear cellophane with postcards in them. And we were mailing them out to all the houses. And I started doing home and office, home tenting. And I had a van. I wrapped it. And it was Sunstoppers. And I called it Sunstoppers. And I would, when my mailer would go out, I would sell all the postcards, but they would sell them in lots of four. So if I had 32 or 33, if I had 33 or 34, I could put a 35 and a 36. And it wouldn't cost me more because the paper, the way they printed the paper and then sent out to 50,000 homes, mine didn't cost anything to put a Sunstoppers ad in there. And then I would get calls when it dropped. I would go schedule the appointments and start doing home tenting because I had a non-compete of selling lightning mics in Charlotte. So I went three hours down to the coast, bought a house down there and started tenting windows down at the coast. Um, and then the guy that bought lightning mics for me, uh, we had six locations at the time. And he was a guy that came from Daimler Chrysler who um, was, a, 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 I guess he was a finance guy. He was a very smart guy, uh, but he never really learned the art and the craft of tenting. So he was kind of at the mercy of the tenters. And I think over a period of time, he saw the margins go down from when I sold him the place to, to where it was about 16, 15, 16 months later. And he didn't realize that I was producing about 300,000 a year in gross sales with my own hands. And if you're not going to produce or do anything with your own hands, you're going to sit back in the office, you have 300,000 and less in sales. Um, so the numbers weren't adding up to what, what he had bought the business for. And he called me up and said, Hey man, I'm going to close a couple of stores and I'm going to downsize and consolidate. And I said, I said, and he owed me a little bit of money because I own or finance some of it. And I said, dude, just give me back my store in Matthews and we'll call it even. And you don't owe me anything. And I'll just go back and I'll open up Sunstoppers over there. And I opened up Sunstoppers at my Matthews location, which is about 10 minutes from where I live in Matthews. And that was my first brick and mortar store. And that was about 17, 18 years ago. And then how many total Sunstoppers are there? And how many are like your operate, like you own and operate yourself? I mean, right now, I'd rather not say how many I own. Um, okay. I've got my That's hands fair. in a few. I've just got my hands yeah. in a few here and there. I've got deals with different people. Got so it. Well, how many total are there? Total, total. You know, I don't know. I think we're sniffing 70, 71, something. I don't know. 72. Yeah. I don't keep track of that stuff. I mean, it's one of those things where we do – we have systems and processes built in place that people can pay a membership to join us. So if they – I have guys paying $500 a month for Google ad management. And we, we have national um, credit card processing in the 1% at Square. Uh, we get discounts nationally on products that we order, T-shirts, business cards. We have a full-time graphic designer that can order you anything you want. You're, we're your 1-800 black card, like Amex card. If you need anything, you just call us and we do it all for you. That's very cool. Like um, if you want shirts, you want signs, you want graphics, you want your vehicle wrap. <laughs> do you want window tent training? Send them to Charlotte. Our school will teach you. You want paint protection training? Send them to us. And you're you saying like cooks? anybody can do that? Like if somebody's anybody. like, hey, I don't want Google ads, but I'm a anybody. solar effects <laughs> dealer. I can send my – we can, can send any, We can do Google ads, Facebook ads, content creation, YouTube. We have video production. We do everything in-house. These are all right. staff members of Sunstoppers. We have an army of people. But those staff members, I just want to be clear, because I'm sure people are going to be interested, is those staff members are not only for the Sunstoppers, but they're also for anybody who potentially wants these services. There's yeah, so, 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 Sunstoppers, so Sunstoppers, if you want to be part of Sunstoppers, call me and I'll explain to you what you get. I can send you an email with a whole breakdown yeah, of what you get. And these are your services. It's like going to Costco and saying, hey, 
I got a discount here. I got a discount here. I got a discount here. The five hundred dollars a month we charge is five hundred dollars a month. I'm organically, organically off of Sunstoppers.com generating four to six leads a day. If you value an auto tent lead at twenty dollars, just say twenty bucks, and you get four a day, eighty bucks a day that we're generating for you just by being a member of our our website. And I have the data to show you this. I have the sh- I can show you data to prove the numbers. Yeah, and- my, my real question, I think, was just, and I still want to make sure yeah. it's clear because I might have confused people, and I don't want to. Is sure. do you have to become a Sunstoppers to access any or all of these services, or could you not become a Sunstoppers but still use some of these services? Okay, so we just we developed two different companies, Sunstoppers. You have to become a branded portion of Sunstoppers. You have to be with Expel. We're exclusive with Expel. That's part of the Sunstoppers model and you get all the benefits. But if you want help and you want coaching and you want guidance and you want funding, we have another company called Velocity. Uh, Thad Norman and myself partnered with a company called Velocity Marketing. And we pretty much do all the back end stuff to help everybody. We have tent shops all over the country that we're doing Google ads and Facebook ads for right now. Got it. That's the question. We, we can shoot the content in our stores with our videographer. We can write the content and we can show you on a scale of 50 to 60 stores, what's working, what's not working. We can figure out if it's $8 a click, $12 a click, $6 a click. We know when the clicks start going up and the ad runs its course in 45 to 60 days, we need to revamp it and put new content out there for the cost to go down. We have all the analytics. Uh, Thad's an engineer and um, he's got an engineer. Was he got a PhD in physics? I mean, the guy's a genius. Dr. Thad? He, yeah. Um, I mean, he's not a Dr. Thad to me. If he's a PhD, <laughs> he's a doctor. I'm just, you What's call that? him Dr. Thad. I'm sorry, he's got a master's. I'm, I'm oh, got it, got it, got it. My, my technician is uh, giving me the accurate information. No, he's, a, he's got a master's. Uh, but he was in the military. He's, he's a process oriented guy. He's efficiency expert. He's been you on know, tin wisdom. It's not he a, was. I mean, be new we, to the we, audience. We did this for like two years, man. I, I mean, Are we you still telling me do lightning, Mike and thunder, Thad clash, clash at the beginning. We, we did for years, man. I mean, so how did you meet? Me. Let's start there. I'm curious. How did you even connect? So we, Thad ran a company. He was a founder of hypercar in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it was, it was McLaren's and he was doing what's called super builds. So he was spending 50 to a hundred thousand dollars on a McLaren and making them the baddest McLaren's on the planet. We're talking like 11, 1200 horsepower McLaren's and they were tracking them wheels, wraps. So Rob Ruska, um, who worked in Lake Norman, uh, at the sun stoppers in Lake Norman, uh, became friends or colleagues with Thad. And Thad would bring McLarens over and Rob would paint protect them. Mm -hmm. And we did a wrap for him, I think, one time. We did some accents, some tent. And Thad kept coming around and Rob kept calling me. He's like, dude, this dude right here, he's so damn picky, such an anal. And Rob kept giving me lip about Thad. Thad is just ex-military. And he's just a guy that if you don't know him, you'll think he is talking down to you or you'll think that he is – the drill sergeant from the military. And he's not a drill sergeant. He's just a talker that talks in the, in a voice that's kind of. So is that how you butted heads at the beginning was just simply because of that kind of. Um, he's, he think his process his mental process is different. Like he values everything he says is the most important thing. And he always thinks he's right. Um, so it's hard for a window tinter like myself or a paint protection installer who to talk to a guy who is a master's, in nuclear engineering. So it's, it's just a level of, of brain power, really. You know, I think on my left side of the brain, he thinks on his right side of the brain, there's no right or wrong. It's just now we figured out how to work together. And it took years. It's like a marriage. It just, it takes time. Um, you know, Rob and him didn't get along. It caused some conflict between me and Rob. Um, and, you know, Rob and I are now good. You know, we're, we're, we've patched up and I love him. He's a great guy. I mean, he was a great asset to Sunstoppers when he worked with us. Um, the, uh, the Thad came to me after he was, he, he had maxed out the guys that were the investors in the store at Hypercar were using this as a toy store. And he was based getting profit of the business and they were eating all the profits the investors were. So he, 
he didn't see a, a future in that business. And he came and asked me to go to a Hornets game or a Bobcats game at the time. And he said, hey, man, I'm going to expand and go out and do consulting for businesses and want to know if you needed any help. And I said, bro, I'm about to go under back surgery and um, I'm going to need some help running my stores. And I said, I'm not trying to pay you to be a babysitter to my stores, but I need you to be a babysitter to my stores <laughs> and uh, go around and see if they need toilet paper. They need, you know, bounty if they need, you know, squeegees, if they need lunch. Um, just make sure that everything is being taken. Because I was at home in bed after having back surgery and I couldn't walk. And he went around to the stores, answered the phones, picked up cars, kind of was the grunt, did, did whatever the business needed. And then we just evolved from there. And, he, and he's like, how do I make, you know, some more income from the company. And he was helping, I think, another business and helping another business doing some consulting. Um, and next thing you know, we evolved into where we are today. And he's been with the company, I think, almost five years, four or five years. Um, and he's helped a tremendous amount with technology. Uh, we fought on so many different things because, man, I'm a calendar guy. I like a piece of paper. I like a yellow legal pad. Your name is Mrs. Johnson. Oh, okay, cool. Here you go, Mrs. Johnson. What time do you want to come in tomorrow, baby? All right, here you go. Now it's all this automation, and he put all that into all the stores. And my guys fought me for months and months and months. My guys fought me at all my stores. They all were like, "Who this guy that is? Who?" Blah, blah, blah. Two years later, their income does this, their efficiency does this, and they're just like, "We love Thad. Oh my God, he's amazing." <laughs> so. Very cool. It's uh, you never know who you're going to meet along the way. And it sounds like, you know, again, it was almost like, uh, obviously, it's unfortunate that you had that back surgery, but it created an opportunity for him to be able to show you what he was about, because, you know, you had to rely on him and he had to do whatever it took. And that's like a great interview to see if somebody's what they're really about. You know, you know his he told me, I think, probably eight months in, he's like, man, I want to get married and I want to buy a house and I want to have a kid. Mm hmm. And he was turned down for a, uh, a loan for a house, I think, when he was at Hypercar. And I think two different loans didn't go through or something. Because, military. I feel like VA loans. Like, that's disappointing. I think, it's just disappointing well, think, to hear. Well, you got to understand when you're an entrepreneur and you have income streams that are uneven. Yeah. They're not no, a consistency. Sure. So I think with the house credit, I mean, I think he had great credit. I think it was just one of those things where you're trying to buy X amount of house income deposit down payment it just wasn't yeah. right and now he's married he has a kid right. and he owns a beautiful house in lake norman and um i feel Sunstoppers and the partnership that him and i had helped contribute that and you know he's he's done a big part of helping our company grow and he got me out of thinking the way i once thought and now i see a bigger picture i mean like you said you, you know left brain right brain whatever it is when you can compliment somebody and learn from them and they can compliment and learn from you and so on. It's that's, that's a really what the relationships can be. So I'm great. passion, I'm drive, I'm determination. I'm not for everybody. Most people that meet me when they first meet me usually don't like me the first time they meet me. It takes three, four, five times for them to go, okay, I now know Mike. He's awesome. He's cool. I have my fans and then I have my not fans and, and I'm okay with it either. So how is that possible? Because you obviously have dealt with a zillion customers in your life, right? Like retail yeah. customers, a zillion sure. of them. And you probably wanted to be likable and you were likable and, and, and so on. Then like, how are you saying that most people don't like you? Is that just self-deprecating humor or do you really think that? No, I really do think that because I don't ever want to be intimidating. I don't want to be intimidating. I'm, I'm, I'm a bigger guy. I walk in the room. I'm a big presence. And people who don't know me think of me as being intimidating, and I'm and I'm not. I, I don't want to be intimidating. I'm a big teddy bear. I'll hug you. I'll I'll mess with you. I do pick and I do joke around, um, but I have nervous energy. Um, I'm an anxious person. I, I'm I'm ADD. I'm, I'm like most tenors. The difference is is that marijuana doesn't work for me. I've tried it. Uh, gummies. I've tried marijuana. I've tried different strains. Honestly. You know, two drinks a night. I go to the gym. I swim. I ride my mountain bike. Brings me down a little bit. I wake up in the morning. I'm at level 100. Are you mountain biking, preparing for next year's 
but no. <laughs> hundred mile no. run. If I do the the bike ride with Matt, I'm going to have the best e bike there is, where I just hit the button and no I just. Start. They've got to be people <laughs> sneaking in batteries in their freaking bicycle that, or something. I would be the guy with the biggest battery, and then I would go about every ten miles, and I would change my battery, and then I would keep up with them. So yeah, right. But no, I mean, go ahead. I would love to ask me any questions you want, man. I mean, I'm, I'm an open book. Well, I'll scroll through. What were you going to say, though? Because I was really about to just scroll through and see if um, see if there were any questions that I might have missed in the comments. But um, if anybody wants to be on Tent Rescue, go to tentrescue.com and fill out the page. And we would love to interview you and see if you're a candidate for the next uh, up and coming shows. Yeah, tintrescue.com. We pulled it up earlier and applied to be on the show. It's a simple form. And, you know, it's a name, phone, and email, and then you reach back out to them and kind of see what they're about. Yep. Very cool. And if anybody's looking for just coaching advice in their business and they're kind of reached a plateau of where they are and just talking to someone else, like even talking to you, Eric. I mean, I've talked to you many times at dinner. I've met you at different conferences you're such a wealth of knowledge. I mean, you've been all over the place. You, you've been on all these different shows and you, you're accessible. Um, I really enjoy the one-on-one -on -one time with you. It's very difficult sometimes when we get around each other because there's five people here, there's two people here. You're pulled in the direction, I'm pulled in the direction. But I think sitting and having coffee or one-on-one -on -one, 30, 45 minutes with you, we were in a steam room together uh, in mm -hmm. Dallas. Yeah, we uh -huh. were in a steam room together. Um, mm -hmm. You're just a remarkable human being yourself, and I learned a lot from you as well. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you to say. And um, what's the truth? You know, I, well, I appreciate that, and you know, the the feelings mutual. The steam room talk I remember very vividly, <laughs> and uh, and outside the steam room, and I know what you mean. It's uh, it's hard to get that one on one time when you're in these social settings, and those are typically when we end up seeing each other. And right. it's actually been a goal of my own uh, projecting out to the WFCT this year in September that it was, it's a conscious goal that I've made of my own to try to be more available for everyone because I felt like I'm, I'm available. Like I'm, I'm always with everybody, but I just felt like there was more. I felt like I leave there saying there's people I miss. There's people I, I said, I'm going to talk to and I never got back to. And I just want to be, I want to find more hours in the day this year and, and structure things in a way that I don't leave there feeling like, I missed people that I wanted more interaction with. So if anyone doesn't know what XDC is, it's Expel's Dealer Conference. And it was about 750 to 800 people there. In the Expel world, a lot of people know who Mike Burke is. And so Thad and I were talking to Chris Hardy, and we were asked to do breakout sessions. So on Friday... I didn't realize this, but I thought we were doing like one or two on Friday and then like one or two on Saturday. Thad and his ambitious self turned around and said, we want them all. We want every time slot. And I didn't realize that until we got there that we were every time slot. So from nine o'clock until four o'clock, I did five one hour sessions on Friday and four on Sunday uh, with that. And we did a presentation, a PowerPoint and went through all types of you know Google ads and processes and things. And we were able to engage and talk to the audience. And I got to meet everybody that went to the show. Everybody right. came, talked to me after the class. Everybody came in and asking me questions, asked dad questions. And I honestly got to see everyone in a one hour session with about 50 people in a room. And, um, you know, I, I don't know to add to that, but if you could do a small little room where you could do small little tables of like 20, 30 minutes, uh, little round tables, discussions, maybe twice or three times during the event and limit it to a certain amount of people. A lot of people want to talk to you. I mean, you're a wealth of knowledge. You know, you've talked to me, you've done these podcasts. Not everybody gets a chance to watch these podcasts, you know, all the time, but you add a lot of information. That if people have questions about anything, you're, you're a wealth of knowledge. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, I obviously I appreciate the kind words and, and you know, our, our um, interactions and friendship over the years. Um, and also just you, your encouragement to come on here. You know, like you mentioned, Chris Hardy has been on a lot of times. He's such an encouraging uh, person as well. 
And I hope to do more of these, these podcasts. And I, you know, kind of you're transitioning to somewhere at some point I wanted to discuss, which was your own podcast that you've oh, been yeah. doing now for quite a while and kind of yes. talk about, talk about that a little bit. So it's real yeah, talk real, with Mike Burke. Yeah. If you want to pull it up, um, it's, yeah. it's real talk with Mike Burke. We're on YouTube, we're on Spotify and we're on iTunes and it's something I really enjoy. I just shot two episodes yesterday. Uh, they'll be launching a new one on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was Maureen Stockton. Her husband, her ex-husband was her late. I'm sorry. I'm, being corrected uh late husband uh was the ex ceo of mattel in california and um remarkable woman we've become really dear friends uh my girlfriend audrey uh has introduced me it was a client of her she's an architect and just the amount of people i was able to get access to to be on the show uh, it's not just window tending these are real entrepreneurs real world uh all walks of life and it's an amazing experience. I love doing the podcast. All of my podcasts are one-on-one, right across from each other, talking intimately in a room, having a beer, having a whiskey, having a tequila, tasting, and it's live. And it's, it's yeah. not live. It's, it's interacting. I don't do any remote. Everything has to be in the studio. Because that interaction with the human you feel is so important. It's so important. If I was hugging you right now and high-fiving you and I was talking to you, me and you would be eye-to-eye talking and it would be so intimate and it would be so different. And when I say intimate, it's not romance. I'm talking intimate is that where our feelings, you know what Jesus I mean? Jesus, Mike. I didn't think you meant <laughs> romance. All right, so let's I, pull I, it up I, on screen. Yeah, Real Talk with Mike Burke. And let me see. I believe we'll have audio on this intro, which would be pretty appropriate. Okay. Welcome to my podcast. This is Real Talk with Mike Burke. We're on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We look forward to all the new content coming out every week. If you want to be a better person and you want to get ahead in life and you would like to be successful, you tune into my podcast. I'm going to make a difference in your life. We've created a bar setting, two people talking about their life stories, how they got to where they are and where they're going. If you're interested in good content, good people, and good talk, please subscribe today. We're looking for your support. See here, we'll look through real quick, scroll some different episodes. This we had a doctor. Newest. We had doc. We had Doctor Ferrari on, um, which is a plastic surgeon. If you go down, I think it was episode six. Um, here he is, Doctor Ferrari. Yeah, you got to listen to the intro of this one. This one is really, really funny. And sure. she says she want to be a double F cop. <laughs> F. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Right. Well, so so he's a plastic surgeon, and we were talking about the largest um, boob implants that he did. <laughs> she wanted to be a double F cup, and he's like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> Something for everyone to watch after the show. Yeah, we had a cannabis. Uh, I had a cannabis king on. Uh, we, I mean, I've had all types of different yeah. you know people on. Uh, guys that own uh, the men's club or one of the general managers of the men's clubs I've known for years who put on parties, did raves. Um, just we learn something from everyone and it's so, incredible speaking of that you learn something from everyone and you have quite a diverse uh group of guests on your podcast real talk with mike burke who stands out what like one thing what nugget as they say stands out from any of those episodes whether it be business or not business just impactful what stands out to you what stands out in all of the podcasts that i've done out of all the podcasts with the real talk of Mike Burke, with Mike Burke that we just looked at, out of all those, does somebody, something somebody said stand out thought, to you as especially impactful to you? I thought I was the only one that struggled to get to where I was today. Almost everyone has struggled and it's, it's painful to get to where you are. And success in life is, is pain. You have to welcome the pain every single day. It's, it's ups, it's downs, it's drama, it's emotional. And when you hear the emotion that people can walk you through a story of when they got out of high school to college, to their first job, to where they are today. We do timeline podcasts. So when I interview somebody, I say, Hey, who am I talking to today? Where are you from? Where'd you go to school? What do you do for a living? How did you get to where you are today? What have you learned? I mean, I mean, I have people that listen to my podcasts all over the world 
I've been to so many countries now that some of my biggest fans are in Europe. And one of my buddies was on his way to SEMA and he was sending me a screenshot on the plane, listening to my podcast. And I'm like, like somebody oh. else was on the plane watching your podcast. And yes, what? Yes. Like, so they're sitting at the screen and you're just like, look at this <laughs> random stranger over here watching yeah. Mike Burke. That's incredible. Yes. That's I'm not kidding. Incredible. Uh, that's it was, incredible. It, it, I can show you the screen. I'll send it to you off air. It, I'll Leave. send you. He's sit, He's taking a picture, and Leave he's like, it. he sent. He sent it to me on the way to SEMA. He was like, because he was flying. And yeah, he, it's crazy. That's really um, cool. Yeah, and then Chris West. The, the my favorite story, more than anything, is when uh, we went to the UK and we went into this amazing paint protection shop. I mean, we're talking Bentleys, Paganis, Rolls Royces, you know, Land Rovers, Land. I mean, Lamborghinis. We're talking rows of cars. I mean, this place is like a warehouse of like, ah. And um, we walk in right to the front door. Chris West is introducing me because I'm with him and we're doing what's called tour shops. We're going to different facilities, just meeting and talking and seeing how they run the facility, see if they need anything. Kind of like a sales rep does, but not really. Kind of more of the back end, just relationship side and asking questions, technical, how's the film? What can we do better? Those types of things. Um, And the dude goes, hey, I just want to introduce you to Mike Burke. Um, he's from the U S he owns Sunstar. He goes, man, I know Mike Burke. I listened to his podcast and Chris West's face went white and he literally walked in the door and he goes, I can't take this guy fucking anywhere. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's so I, that's probably my most, I guess, favorable story. Cause I respect Chris. He's one of my dearest friends and he's, I, he's a mentor to me and, and just to get his respect and earn his respect is an honor in my, in my book. Absolutely. And Obviously, with this level of success, the podcast is going nowhere. It's something that you'll continue to do, yeah? I have a new vision that's just being created here recently. I have a new director of my podcast that's getting sponsors and going to take it. Um, He's going to be the third, so we have a third person that's going to be kind of in the background. Okay. Um, So we're working on some new things right now, and he's going to be- Jamie? Like a pull it up Jamie type of scenario? Um, You'll see. It's Okay. We'll Uh, see. He's uh, he's a flamboyant uh, young man, and uh, he's a car lover, and um, he's very connected into the world. And he's going to bring in some some higher profile clients. Heck yeah, that sounds like fun. So we're we're bringing in if if you want to listen to some good content and really hear some successful stories, this Friday is the best pound for pound podcast I've done. This past, this could be launched this Friday. It is by far, it's number 32. I've got 33 being launched uh, next Tuesday. I have 34 going out. I've already shot a bunch of them that are about to now mm-hmm. go out. And um, I learn from each podcast. Like every one I learn from, I learned the next one, how to do it a little better, how to ask different questions. Because it's not about me. When you're doing a podcast, it's not about me. It's about the audience listening to the guest. And that's something that's taken me time to learn. Um, I'm a talker. I love to talk. I love to, you know, jump around. And sometimes I'll get off topic. <laughs> and when you do the podcast, it's it. When you're one on one, I'm more focused, and I I start to hyper focus into what we're doing. And it's um it's awesome, man. I've learned so much about myself just doing the podcast. In these moments, we're. I don't know, 90 minutes in, 80 minutes into this podcast. Do you don't kind of feel this little bit of sense like we're in the same room? It's the, I do. I do, right? Like it's, I, it's like, I do, but the thing that helps me more than anything is I'm a little deaf in my left ear. I had some guns uh, shooting years ago that I didn't realize I was a little weaker in my left ear. I didn't realize I was talking on the phone with my right ear and my hand started to go numb. So I took my left ear and I'm like, hello. You're like, the volume's <laughs> broken on my phone. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so yeah. anytime I try to talk, yeah headphones noise cancellation yeah is key for me yeah. um i feel like we're in the same room but it would be nice to be in a for studio sure. so if you could ever go mobile and go mobile and do some podcasts like it when the film or when the film conference man bring your podcast equipment do one or two there yeah i i would love to um if the window film conference was so interested or willing i would love to set up it's it's totally i'm i'm very mobile setup actually um, these well, Deb, purple walls can actually be deconstructed and traveling very easily. So I can actually move with the purple walls super easy. You know, um, I, I have a friend uh, who runs that named Deb. Um, I write, I don't know if you knew, I write articles for Wendell Film Magazine and Paint Protection Magazine. I do and, know. Um, 
and Chris, uh, what's it, Collier? Uh, Chris Collier. Chris West is, is now, also a contributor, and Marco Cazorla as well, a contributor of this wonderful magazine. Um, this when the film um, conference, uh, Thad and I are going to be doing a two-hour breakout session the day before, at right at check-in. Yeah, we're going to. I don't know if I'm supposed to announce that or not, but I, we're going to be. I think I, I think it has been I feel like I read it somewhere or something. I think right? you're right. I think they've already announced it. But yeah, we're going to be doing uh, a two hour presentation, um, I think from three o'clock to five o'clock, uh, the day of check in uh, the before it starts. We're going to do that. That's fantastic. Um, is it going to be something similar to what like the kind of the sun, the way you did at XDC or is it something? I think it's going to be a lot better. We're, we're going to we crammed in so much in an hour. Hmm. We were starving for that extra hour. Um, the PowerPoint, the, the questions, the Q&A. We love to get the audience involved and talk and, and ask questions. And Thad's an engineer, man. He's a data-driven person. So he's got analytics and data and stats to, to, to not bore you, but to blow your mind. Like when he shows you stuff, you're like, what the hell, man? And <laughs> and then I add my little razzle dazzle to it. So we've we've gotten to be a pretty good little combo, man. You know. Well, that's fantastic. Um, and that'll be the first day, the day before the actual WFCT. It'll be the day, the night, the evening prior, the afternoon prior. Yeah, from three to five. I think check ins from like twelve to six. So if you get checked in and get there early, a lot of people standing around, a lot of people not doing anything. They're walking through. Everybody's doing like setups and things like that. But yeah. the people who are coming to the show are there the day before and there's nothing to do. The, the show's not going on yet. So sure. we decided to do a two hour. And if anybody just wants to come and just listen, just come. Yeah. And uh, if you're there, just come pay attention for two hours. You'll learn something. Uh, the show will be more about learning something. And that's going to be in the middle of September in beautiful Virginia beach at the uh, yes. convention center, which is really just um, a couple miles from the beach, maybe a mile or so from the beach, straight down one roadway and you're in the sand. So that's kind of an exciting location. Never it's also a very there. nice convention center full of glass. Oh, wow. I've never been there. Oh, I haven't either, but I, uh, I looked it up and I saw the, the glass building and it looks very modern and new. And then I looked on the map and you know, you're going to have your toes in the sand the same day as um, those sneakers walking around. That's really cool for WFCT. Now, before WFCT is the Window Film Re Revolution Family Reunion. That's taking place in Athens, Georgia on July 26th through the 28th. The setup day is the 25th. Um, are you doing anything for that event? I'm the keynote speaker. Beautiful. So what does that entail? What's the topic? I can't tell you. That's okay. Is there anything I've... else you're doing that you can tell us about? What? At Window Film Revolution? Yeah, uh, it's coming reunion? up soon. It, it's going to be in Athens, Georgia. It's July 25th, July set up 25th. date 26th through the 28th is the event. It's three days of competition. It's um, at the Classic Center, and it's going to be a big, good time, I hope, I believe. You know, Rick Tallman has – I've known this guy forever, and, you know, he's up, down, emotional, all over the place, and he's, he's got a group of people helping him that are really uh, doing a good job organizing and collaborating and trying to, you know, he told me years ago, I mean, multiple years ago about this was his dream is to do something. thousand plus square feet. Yes. So he, his dream was to get a lot of people together um, and organize something better than what, when the film um, conference was in the past, he wanted to do something more about the people. Um, he did one that was a small one. I unfortunately couldn't make it. I was going through my cancer treatment. Uh, I just had surgery I had 68 stitches on my head, 38 on my, my side where I had to, you know, get over some, some cancer and, uh, couldn't make it. My eyes were swollen shut. Uh, they were black and blue. You sent me, uh, you know, something. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, of and, course. Uh, and I, there was a, there's a, um, an article about this, your experience in the window film magazine. Yeah. Previous, uh, ep previous edition that kind of chronicles what you went through, which yeah, it was tough. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. This one was pretty dangerous. I, I thought I was, it, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, luckily I'm good now. And, um, you know, just living my life, man. I'm so thankful to be alive. And, you know, I've had a traumatic experience with my back surgery. I struggle every day to walk, um, in the fall, I've, uh, after, um, the window film 
uh, conference, I've got to have hip replacement surgery. Okay. So my right hip needs to be replaced. Um, okay. I've abused my body, man. I, I was on concrete tending cars seven days a week for years and years and years and years in and out of cars on concrete, man. I, I was always on my feet, uh, you know, playing sports, you know, being very athletic is taking a toll on my body. So would you, to somebody who might be you when you were like in your thirties, twenties, thirties, would you say, be conscious of this? Don't overdo it because save it your money on you, or what would you say? Save your money because it's not going to last forever. Your body's going to give up eventually. Like I, I just had John little came over to um, visit me in Keller, Texas. He called me and said, Hey man, are you in Texas? I said, yeah, he came by the shop. You know, who John little is, of course, he's an amazing human being. Um, I call him the, the counselor of the window tending world. Like he, everyone calls him. He's, he's an amazing man. Um, he came in and shot the shit for like an hour in my shop. And we were just talking about all the war wounds, man. <laughs> you know, him and his brother still tenting windows, still grinding. And um, it takes a toll on us. And that's what I love to coach. When someone, you know, calls me and says, Hey Mike, I need some coaching. I'll fly to their shop. I'll spend a day with them. I'll go in and say, Hey man, here's what I see. Here's what I think you can do. And sometimes I do financial planning, man. Sometimes I'm, you know, I'm a finance guy. I have an accounting background. I have a marketing background. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to go to college. I was fortunate enough to work in the car industry and the car business and did finance and did sales. And I have a elaborate background of sales and finance. And a lot of the smaller window tinting companies around the world, need a coach they need a help and that's what i really inspire to do now is just to give back and help great question by keenan he asked mike where do you see yourself when you're 60 which if it's okay to talk about i believe you hit a milestone birthday just fairly recently 50. You hit yeah 50. i got me a, i got me a new tattoo right here in tokyo in tokyo japan and that in was tokyo, on the japan. west yeah uh, Chris was with me, but he wasn't. What does it say? Yet. So if you can see on the camera. Oh yeah. Um, I'm going to give you the, the two versions. Um, okay. number one is when Chris West and I met, we met at a conference and he was sitting at a table with some directors and salespeople. And I, when he was on my podcast, he was number one. We talked about this and He's Chris West. He's won Expel's paint protection competition five times. He has won window film conferences, paint protection a couple of times. Everybody knew who Chris West was. I mean, he, everybody. Mm -hmm. So the couple of people at the table knew who I was. And when I got to the table, someone introduced me. He said, hey, you know Mike Burke? He goes, no, I don't. And I said, you don't know Mike Burke? He said, you don't know who I am? And I said, I'm Mike motherfucking Burke. <laughs> and it was just a, a, I don't know, it was me trying to make funny joke about, hey, you don't know who I am. I know who you are. And uh, it just kind of resonated. And now I have friends that call me from Alex from Automobilia, Rick Jeffries. I mean, I have guys that we met at XTC that we've all become really close friends. And when they call or I call, they'll say, Mike motherfucking Burke. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my nickname. So this is M M F B. Okay. <laughs> that's really, that's um, cool. realistically it's honor, brave courage, um, honor, respect, bravery, courage. And, uh, it's Chinese, um, calligraphy with a Japanese meaning. Um, and there was this one tattoo artist that we researched who is phenomenal. Uh, and that's, this is all he does. He does this crazy calligraphy type tattooing in Tokyo. Um, amazing guy. We sat there, couldn't speak a lick of English, but he was the most sweetest. I don't know if anybody in the audience has ever been to Japan, but this it is an amazing country. The people are so humble, so efficient. The bathrooms there, we were talking about bathrooms, mm -hmm. bro. So you could go to the subway. Doesn't matter where you go, anywhere in Tokyo, you go to the airport, subway. I love the. You're sound. going to a you're going to a bathroom that is nicer than the Ritz Carlton's bathroom. You sit down on a heated toilet. You have buttons that will spray water and clean you. Citrus stuff that sprays. 
And there's guys that clean the bathroom like they're ceramic coating a car. I mean, so when I you wake up in the morning and, yeah. and you leave your hotel, I've, I've been in New York many, many times, and I won't leave the hotel unless I've gone to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, certainly no public restrooms. Um, so Keenan, Keenan is an a, a amazing man. Uh, he came to Charlotte to learn how to do paint protection. I actually mm -hmm. mentored him and taught him how to do paint protection. And we oh, saw him cool. at XTC. Uh, and he wants to know where I'm going to be at 60. Where do you see yourself when you're 60? Same thing. Same thing I'm doing right now. I'm never going to stop. I love what I do. And, and if I stop what I'm doing, I'm going to die. It, it, there's no stopping. I'm going to tint windows and keep helping people till I'm 90. When you retire, I can retire today, but what's retirement mean? I can pick up the phone, call anybody I know in the world and say, hey, where do you want to go? What plane do you want to get on? And in three or four days, I'm going to be bored and want to go back to doing what I was doing. So yeah. I, I, if anybody asks me what I'm doing, I can take a break. You have to recharge the batteries, of course. Like in life, sometimes you just need a pause button, hit the pause button and say, I need a timeout. There's some days I just turn my phone off and I'll just go meditate. I'll just go re reflect on life and not talk to a single soul and just try to realize and recenter myself and understand where I'm at in the world and what I need to be doing. Do you like hiking? I, did, I used to before I had back surgery. Hmm. Unfortunately, my body can't do a lot of the things I used to do. I can hike a little. I think we did a mile um, in the mountains of North Carolina up to a waterfall and back. I just walk slow. I mean, I can walk. I can do things. I just I'm not as active as I, I would like to be. Just my body limits me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I walk uh, a little crooked. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the unfortunate parts of age and what it does to your body. Um, but I never want to really retire ever. Sitting home and watching TV and doing crossword puzzles does not sound inviting to me. No, no. I think like, I think this goes for, I want to say every single person in the industry, whether it be window film or pain protection, literally every single one, you know, like, you, you do it every day. It, it, I feel like it becomes the industry in general, regardless of what, what aspect, whether you're an installer or you're just in the industry, it has a way of bringing you in and making it a passion. And um, it's, it's just not like if you're clocking in somewhere and clocking out, I could see you looking forward to the end of that. So you can go do other things, but I just feel like the people in this industry, the other things they do are this, like that ends up becoming a lot of the things you do. So I definitely think a lot of people can relate to that feeling of never wanting to retire per se. I think we all need to start working together more. Well, I suggested after Tinder Battles won in Houston that everyone move to Houston nationwide. Just everyone go there and we figure it out after everyone <laughs> gets there. What do you suggest? How do we how do we make this happen? So, you know, I'm a crazy, you know, person. My mind never stops. I have ideas. I think all the time. I'm always just my brain just does this all day long. My dream is to have one company all working together doing window tinting. Imagine this. And I'm just going to give you a hypothetical dream. Okay. If there was one, say, say we all partnered with Expel. And expel. <laughs> oh my God. People are literally rioting outside my window right now that you said that. There's literally fires going on outside my house, but keep going. Keep going. <laughs> so if you turn around, and I'm just using this as a scenario, okay? Yeah, yeah. East, Eastman's a great company. 3M's a great company. There, there's a great companies. And maybe we do it in what I'm going to go and paint a picture. Everybody seen Cobra Kai, the, the karate. I know what you're talking about, but I haven't seen it. Karate Kid. Yeah. Okay. So imagine having Cobra Kai, this dojo, this dojo. We're going to break down window film into five dojos. If, if the dojo, all the people, see, we have, I have a website, I have a marketing budget, I have a training facility, I have all the things to help support Sunstoppers, right? But imagine if we took, say, $1,000 a month, just $1,000 a month, and we gave it to Expel hypothetically. And they did all of our marketing for us. They did the Google ads, they did the Facebook ads, and they did content creation, and they did everything. And they did lead generation forms and one website. And you fill out all, and you take all of Google and all of Facebook and all of TikTok and all of Instagram, and you funnel it 
into this one place of awareness. And then you just spread all the leads out to everyone else. You wouldn't have to worry about a website. You wouldn't have to worry about anything. You would have leads and business coming in all over the damn place. Because I would probably say a lot of shops do not do Google ads, Facebook ads and awareness. Here's a question. Did you mean literally everyone? What do you mean? You said everyone. Like everyone. everyone. So do you mean literally like, like best case goal would be literally everyone? Like the whole not saying, everyone? No. I, I'm not saying that exactly. I'm I mean, saying I everyone. Don't mean that, I'm not trying to get you in like, oh, that's not going to happen. My question is just simply everyone like. Everyone that's with Expel right now. Got it. So like as a brand, everyone kind of. So, so if you're an Expel dealer right, right now and just yeah. Expel. And you, I'm not talking about 3M. I'm talking about solar. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm just saying yeah. the existing model of people because XCC had almost 800 people there, right? And I would love to say, okay, I don't have to worry about getting a videographer. I don't have to worry about doing TikTok videos. Right. Expel did all that for me. Mm-hmm. I give them a thousand dollars a month per location, and mm-hmm. they handle building awareness. There's, just say, for instance, is there's I'm just gonna I don't even know the number. I have no idea. I'm just gonna take a round number and say three thousand Expel dealers. Here? Or, What's that? Expel dealers in the, you're saying in the U.S. maybe or in the right. world. Right. So uh, you, you can get a calculator out and say three thousand Expel dealers. Okay, I got it. Times a thousand dollars a month. Okay, I got that in my head. But go ahead. How much is that? Three million. Times twelve months. Times twelve months. Thirty-six million. So thirty-six million. Yeah. No. So you've wait. got. Yeah. 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 Thirty-six right. million. Okay. So $36 million could be a budget for just auto tent. Just right. say auto tent. $1,000 a month, paint protection. $1,000 a month for residential home and office tenting. Mm-hmm. You have a budget. If you're doing all three, if you're doing ceramic coating, $1,000 a month. Okay. So let's take window tent, auto tent. Let's take paint protection. Let's take ceramic coating. Take home and office. Four, so it's four grand a month. Okay. You're not paying for a website. You're not paying for content creation. You're not paying for Google ads. You're giving a thousand dollars a month for each service that you do to a company that handles it globally for everything for awareness. Right. And they're going to spread all the leads out to everybody. So essentially it's, I mean, that's like my understanding of typically like how franchises kind of handle their marketing, right? Like simple. franchises yeah. pay into their marketing and the franchise yeah. or it's a dream. In. All I'm saying, sure. Eric, it's a dream. I wish like if somebody came and opened up another tent shop in Charlotte, North Carolina or Texas, let's say I, I love them. Oh, I know. I I'm just them. saying like, let's just say them. Cause they're like, Hey, this is another right. kind of similar no scenario where they're probably, no that's how they handle their marketing, but spend three or $4,000 building more awareness and people are going to call me too. So sure. I feel like the five, six other tent shops in Charlotte, North Carolina need to be sending me, you know, 20 bucks a month. Or a hundred dollars a month because I'm generating business for them. <laughs> I, you're not wrong. I mean, in the sense, like I'm building awareness within their market participates in building awareness, setting right. up the pricing and the tone, and it's just awareness. You know what I mean? I, like, right. The more tent shops and paper protection shops that open up across the country, the very first thing I'm going to tell you is set an advertising budget and advertise, and it'll help us all. So let me ask you this. And yeah, of course, like, because more awareness is more awareness. And, um, well, there's obviously, two million cars like, in Charlotte, North Carolina, I can only tent 15, 16,000 a year. So this is an idea that I doubt I'm the first person you shared it with. And today, unless I am, which, um, is cool, but is this something that you have shared with expel? You use them as an example. You've probably, I haven't, I, I haven't, but the reason I said this is because that's what we do at Sunstoppers. You pull your money with us and we do it and we all help each other. And then the budget's a lot lower and you get a lot of more bang for your buck. Got it. That's, that's, that's really in a nutshell what we're doing internally yeah. at Sunstoppers. It's just, I see the success. I take a shop that joins Sunstoppers and I see the growth and I see the growth and I see the growth. And I'm just like, God, if we could do this on a bigger scale. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're on the way to doing that, right? It's little steps, man. Like I can only do so much, man. Like, you know, my day is almost full as it is. And I love to help people, but I love people to call me, reach out to me. And we just all need to start collaborating. It's the simplest things. 
get the phone out of your hand if you're the owner. Hire a salesperson who knows how to sell. Ask for the business. It's it's just a lot of simple processes that are tested in, in time. I mean, we're just a little old as far as letting go. There's a lot of control freaks in what we do. They think they have to answer the phone. They think the customers need to talk to them. They think they're the business. And I had a tent shop in Florida two or three years ago call me up asking me to buy them out. Owner said, hey, man, I've been in business 15 years. You know, we do X amount of business a year. It's just me and my wife. And I have a, a buddy in the back that kind of helps me out. And I'm like, how much you want for your business? I want a million dollars for my business. Mm-hmm. And I go, a million dollars for your business? He goes, yeah, man, I do a half a million dollars a year in sales. I figure it's worth two times what I, what I do a year. And I go, well, if I buy the business – you, how much film do you have? How much plot do you have? How much is your rent? You rent the building, right? He goes, yeah. And I go, well, if I take the business and buy it from you, how many employees are, am I going to have to run the business when I buy it? Well, I, I'm looking to retire. And I said, you are the business. You don't have anything to sell except film, maybe a phone number, you know, some good faith. Which, which look, that business would have value to the right person, but that person probably doesn't have the money to buy it because that's why it's valuable to them. You know what I mean? Um, so it's a tricky scenario. And if you want to exit your window film company, you definitely have to consider that ahead of time because what you're saying is it. It's the problem in the industry um, in general. You well, remove the I, owner and you remove the business. Well, what I want to do is, is, is coach a lot of the younger g- generation into getting those strategies in place now setting the formula and the structure in place now to know your growth pattern and to know if, if you're not growing and you want a job, that's fine. No problem. If you want to take close your store, I have two Greek restaurant friends of mine that own. They close for two weeks a year and their restaurant is closed and they pay their staff and the restaurant is closed. When the owner wants to take a vacation and go back to Greece, they close the restaurant because they don't want to be in Greece having a grease fire and somebody melting the business down. They want to go on vacation and not have to worry about anything. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want a job and you love tent and windows, you love doing paint protection, you want to grind it out and grind a little, man, do you, bro. I'm not going to be here to tell you you're doing something wrong. I did that for years, man. I tended windows in the shop by myself for years. I just realized my income was capped. I realized my time with my family was capped. I realized my vacation time was capped. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the difference. I just realized I was like, "Shit, I'm stuck yeah. tinting windows all the damn time in the shop." So I think talking to other people who have been in the same shoes that they have, and seeing where they can go, they just need a map. They need some type of vision and get and put a, a game plan in place. And it starts this big. You to tomorrow, let's do this. Next week, let's do that. Don't right. try to. Don't try to run the marathon today. Right. And I think we're such an impatient world. We want it now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I read or I saw an article. I can't remember. It was the Tate guy or something like that. He said, somebody interviewed him and he says, man, so tell me how to get a six pack of abs quick. And he goes, what do you mean quick? He goes, you don't want to do it quick. You want to grind. You want to have pain. You want to suffer and you want to go to the gym and you want to not eat ice cream and you want to not eat crap. And he said, then there's no value. If you didn't go through the pain and you go to the gym and everybody's got a six pack of abs, what value does a six pack of abs have? If you, you know, go through the pain, put a plan together, put some action and, and, and you'll, you'll get success. Everybody yeah. wants it now is all I'm saying is, you know, everybody wants the diet pill that gets you skinny right before the summer. Right. Yeah. Certainly sooner the better, but Any it does questions? take, it does take consistency and um, consistency is the key, man. It is. It really is. And not coming out with extreme things that can't be uh, followed through with on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, because if not, you know, you're leaving one thing behind and starting another and it's always brand new. When you get far enough down that path, like you're saying, with enough people guiding you along the way, um, you there obviously are shortcuts and you can do in maybe three years what somebody else did in 30, but it takes those 30 to guide you there. You know, I have failed so many times, made mistakes. I'm still failing. I'm still making mistakes. What's I your just, most recent failure? A hire, somebody I hired. Tell I us about to, it. It, it's just, I have faith in everyone, man. 
when I, when I interview someone and I hire someone, they're batting a hundred. Like you can only go down. I, there we're, we're a hundred. I believe everything that comes out of your mouth. You, I have no reason to think anything you're saying is wrong. And I can just chip away at your value. Right now, you're hundred percent. You're the high. When we meet and we start doing business together, you're the highest you ever can be. And then the value can only go damn. Down. It never goes up from there. It only yeah. goes down. Only goes down. Nobody can prove more value than you initially assumed. On I, your first I, day. I, I literally value a person at a hundred percent when I meet them, right. and I'm like. Then what I'm saying is this, it's like a math equation. Like I get what you're saying. You're optimistic with them. And I'm optimistic. Yeah, I, I, I have all the hope. I have all the ambition. Like, man, we're going to do this. We're... And then and all of a sudden, what he, doesn't show, he doesn't show up to work. He, you know, all of a sudden, you know, there's an excuse this day. There's an excuse that day. And then it's the expectation. And that's how I need to say the value. I, I need to rephrase this. My expectations get diminished over time. And then the value in my heart to this person, if they don't start to pick it back up, it's hard to regain those expectations. Does that make yeah. sense? It does. And, you know, um, running through running across people like that is certainly part of hiring. It's like part of the process. It's like if you own a convenience store, there's going to be a certain amount of theft. You're going to drop a certain amount of bottles of salsa. There's just going to be like that. So you have to accept that as part of um, part of the process of hiring as I'm sure you do but it obviously is disappointing because like you said you you want to believe their ambitions and what they're saying and so on and, and hopefully it's a great piece of your puzzle but it, it, um, the thing hire is, quick, is when, hire quick, you know and that's well it. that's what I did is is this person came from a medical background um, I, I trusted uh, was had a lot of hope had a lot of value yeah. in, in the package. And just disappointment and disappointment and disappointment led to the parting of ways. Yeah. Well, that's, that's probably the, the biggest disappointment is that you sometimes you pick winners and sometimes you pick losers. Look, that's, I just think it's, it's such a super important one because most businesses will have to hire somebody at some point or another in their career. And if you take that failure two or three, however you want to put it, cause it's really not a failure, but I, I it's a perfect example. Um, if you take that two, if it happens two, three, four times in a row, it's easy to give up. It's easy to say there's something wrong with the world. It's the generation. It's the area. It's the this. It's the that. And really, it's just it's just like dating. Like you likely you might have you might have been with the first person you ever met, but it may have taken more time to get to know yourself to become a better uh, person, which in this case would be a better business owner. Um, it may just you may not be in the right spot even for the person that you had the opportunity with. Not you, of course, in other scenarios. Um, but the point is it's, it's something you just have to keep going till you find the right person, till you get better at identifying the right person, till you get better at keeping the person. And, um, eventually all those people that you do find and keep and are the right person are worth their weight in gold and can just be lifelong members that you both work together to provide yeah. good lives for yourself. Like you're saying, so they can buy a house, so you can buy a house, so everybody can eat and the kids and the grandkids and everybody benefits from a healthy business relationship. I loved what you said earlier. I've used that exact terminology dating. When you hire an employee, if, if anyone takes anything out of this, this, if you hire someone, treat that person like you're going on a first date and like you're trying to get to know each other and that dating process. I really feel that's important. If you can mentally as an owner of a business, look at the new hire, like, you're dating. And I always tell my employees, I work for you guys. Like I work for you. Yeah. If, I, if, I'm here to make your job better. I'm here to make, I'm not micromanaging uh, whatever you need to make your right. job more successful. Let me know. I'll get it for you. Um, right. My job every single day is to make sure every one of my employees have every tool they need and every possibility to grow within Sunstoppers. It's the growth. I want people to make more money next year than they made last year. I want people to have more time off this next year than they did last year. I want, I want that for them. And some of them, my employees are, are commission based and they're, they're, they're hungry guys and they work a lot and they're workaholics. And I have to come in and literally force them to take days off. I'm like, you need to go get out of here. Go home. 
Yeah. Look, a lot of growth can come from that time away. Um, it can easily lead to new perspective. It can easily also foster your staff feeling a sense of responsibility and stepping up and so on. It's a, it's a little bit of a pressure test, but I think a really great one because, you know, if there's, if, if it's a mess, you're going to find out. And if it's not, you're going to also find out that there's a foundation there and build off of it. Well, here's the thing. There's no emergency in window tent. Like who can't wait to get their car tinted the next day? I mean, come on, man. What are we talking about? We put stickers on cars. There are thousands so, of people out there right now that are, at this time, probably searching for a window film company that's open at night, <laughs> trying to get it done. It might be, you know. But I just, I just look at it. There's not an emergency. Sure. It's. I know like, what you mean. There's not an emergency. You can put it off to tomorrow if you need to. You know, nobody has to emergency nine one one get their windows tinted right now. They yeah. can, you know, but uh, I, I'm really excited about Tent Rescue, man. It's a, it's a passion that I've always wanted to, to do a show and, and renovate. And who doesn't like tearing things down and building new walls and, and changing an appearance of the way something looks? Yeah. You know, that whole area when people come in and out of there, the people that had their windows tinted previously that come back in, they're going to be like, whoa, dude, what is going on here, man? Sure, you do a re-grand opening even? like with the, Yes, that's you know, what we're doing. We're going to do a re-grand opening. We're going to promote it. Uh, we're doing an advertising campaign. We're going to do a cookout. It's it's going to be just super cool. And I talked to Dean Mitchell um, not too long ago, and he wants to get tenors with a call to come out and actually do donate some time. We, it's not the money. They want to donate time to come and tent some windows the day of the re-grand opening. Bring me bring a couple of tenors in and be like a big – you know, it's fun when you get about 20 tenors or 10 tenors in a room and we're all tenting windows. You saw it at the very first uh, tenor battles in Houston. I was there and we saw all those people tenting windows and all the guys were collaborating. It went so fast. It was like yeah. tent, tent, tent. It was like, what do we just tent 20 cars? Like what does, what just happened? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's fun. It, you know, the thing is this guy, <clears throat> uh, Andrew has, you know, the plotter alone, is going to sure. double his efficiency. It's it's going to be amazing. I mean, I'm I'm so thankful that he and I have been able to collaborate. But what I really genuinely love about him is if I give him a task or tell him this is what needs to to, be, to do, he does it. Like no question. Like it's he's like Mike. He paved the path. You're my mentor. I do whatever you tell me to do. That's incredible. And I'm, he doesn't I'm, he doesn't fight me. He's respectful. He's humble. Um, it just, every time you see him grow, it's like, I now have, I'm not saying I have another kid, but it's like when you have a child that just sees success, you know, my son just got his first solo pilot, uh, flying. Congratulations to him and to you. Cause that's a family wide success right there. That's amazing. He's, he grinded like hours studying hours and he did his solo twice today, went up, went down, wow. landed and, um, had a blast. He called me so excited. Like he was screaming, dad, I did it. I did it. I did it. And I'm like, you did it, yeah. son, you did. <laughs> do you, um, just curious, do you see yourself like now that he has a pilot license, I'm sure he's going to like own a plane in like no time. Yeah, we're, just imagining. In, a, in a couple of years, he, you know, he's looking at a hangar and possibly yeah. going in and getting something. But the thing is what I had to explain to him, cause he, thinks I'm made out of money and I'm not. <laughs> so I said, son, realistically, you can rent these things. It's like boats. You rent right. a boat, you rent, you rent this kind of thing. You he's an entrepreneur. Planes. I feel like he'll find a way to either rent it and turn it into a business or something. You know what he, you know what he did? Tell me. So about eight months ago, uh, Brian Webb in Oklahoma is one of our sun stoppers. And he called me to talk to me about um, airplane ceramic coating. And okay. he had a client that wanted a plane done, then wanted a helicopter done, and another one. And he was going to get certified to do aviation um, for ceramic coating. And I said, hey, my son does ceramic coating for my company. And my stepson, Alex, uh, I call him my stepson. He's not really my stepson, but he's, I've known him since he was 10. And I've kind of taken him under my wing. And him and my son work together every day. And I love him. Uh, so they, I flew them out to i can't remember what where they went but they went to do a plane and get certified from faa from the aviation to be certified to do planes uh, okay. so he has a certificate now my son does and alex does to do aviation i he 
texted me a picture two weeks ago and he was coding a plane. So him flying planes is now, and then I saw Josh Popnick last week on social media doing a G5 and I'm like, come on, man. Like, really? Like my son's doing like this small little like two propeller or whatever plane. And then he's out there doing these like $50 million jets. And I'm like, you can have that, bro. Um, but no, that's, that's what I love about Josh. He's just go big or go home. I feel like you're going to be maybe flying around. I don't know if you thought about it, but now, you know, he's got to get some miles under his belt. He can fly you around from Sunstoppers locations and to events, the WFCT, you know, maybe one day it's coming. He let's, he, this is a big accomplishment that just happened today. So we need to, we need to kind of move it on. And it's such, such an early age. Um, so many accomplishments, really. I mean, I'm not just saying that it was very impressive. Like that's, that's, I'm sure no shortage of tests and hours and, it's, yeah. it's, it's can't be an easy feat to um, learn to fly a plane. It's, it's hard work. Um, he, he put his mind to it. I'd call him during the day say, Hey man, what are you doing? I'm in the, I'm in my room studying. Like it, it's a grind. Yeah. And um, it's a lot of book work, man. People don't I realize imagine. flying a plane is not just flying a plane. It's book work. It's logging and it's studying stats and, you know, wind and wind speed. And it's crazy. Like the formula yeah. and the math, like I couldn't personally do it. I don't think I could personally do it. <laughs> so I'm very proud of him. That's awesome. Really. Congratulations to you and him. Um, yeah. Thanks him, man. That's just, I'm, I'm a guy that instills confidence. Like, if anyone wants to know what I'm all about, you get on my team. I'm the coach that instills confidence every day. We can do anything we want to do. Um, and that's what I instilled to my son. You can do anything you want to do. Let's go. Like what's failure. If you didn't try it, if you didn't do it, like, if, if okay you're gonna go back in life and say oh i wish i would have done this oh get up and do it let's fucking do it right now let's do it what's stopping us nothing right. air and opportunity is the only thing stopping us right now yeah well that's a good uh good attitude to have for sure just get up every day and move forward don't look left don't look right don't look behind you you know i've really honestly got something i've learned you asked me a question earlier i'm going to revisit the last 12 months what have i learned don't let social media bother you. What what would bother like give me, I guess, your example. Like what would bother you or somebody else? I'm not gonna use myself as an example, but right. I do a lot of coaching and I see people watch social media and have envy. It's it's envy. Uh, people have shops and cars and experiences. And if you're watching a TV channel that causes you anxiety, stop watching that channel. Just stop. Just block them. Delete it. Only watch things that are helping you self grow for yourself. And that's what I do now. Is I, I've blocked a lot of people. It's just noise. I, I love following people that inspire me. And if you're not inspiring me, and you're sucking life out of me, why am I watching you? Yeah. It's just TV too. Like I've got to turn TV on and start watching TV, and I'm getting nothing out of what I'm watching. I feel like, ugh, you know, turn the channel. Why am I watching right. this? I want to get some experience out of what I'm watching. Yeah, uh, fair. And that's what that's what our social media feeds are, right? They're channels, essentially. They're a- yeah, cha- TV channels. They're TV channels. Watch the ones that inspire you and don't draw out the, the negative out of you. Don't, like, if you. If you're going to bed pissed off that you watched something that somebody else was doing, why were you watching it? Just turn it off. Right. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree. No one wants to go to bed pissed off. And no. uh, yeah. So thank you so much for having me on the air, man. It, I, let's wrap this up. Tell me if there's anything you want to ask or questions. No, let's wrap it up. Um, Tint Rescue, looking forward to seeing the first episode and yep. everywhere it goes from there. Thank you so much for, for We're coming excited. on here and sharing. We're excited. You know, uh, I'm always trying to, to conquer new boundaries within what I'm doing. Like I'm always yeah. challenging myself, really. Like, who Who's done a TV show before? <laughs> like this is new. I've never done one before. Yeah. I'm learning. Well, the potential upside is huge. The potential downside is non-existent. So I'm glad you're yeah. doing it. And I don't uh, think there is a downside. Nope. No, I don't think yeah. there is either, but the upside well, know, could be enormous. Let me know on the second one. If you want to be on it, you can come out there and help us. Okay. That sounds, uh, I will let you know. I would love It'd to. It'd be fun. I, I, I'm going to open out this to the next one. We're going to be looking for consultants to come and help us be on the show. 
And Very that's cool. what I feel is going to be fun. It's not about me. Like I'm not going there. I don't want to be John Tapper and come in and be the, 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 the awful guy. I want to be the guy that comes in and kind of directs like, here's what I see. Here's what I need. And then I want to collaborate with someone else who is a peer in the industry that I can kind of relate some, some ideas through. And then that person can add some, 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 some back and forth. Cause it's not, it's not about me. I need someone else to bounce some ideas. The guy that we're helping is asked for help. I want to bring in some other industry leaders that have done what we've done and built successful businesses and put infrastructure in place. And then I'm not good at everything. I have a team of people who are great at everything. I'm good at building teams. So Mike, they always say, Mike, how did you get successful? I realized my weaknesses and I realized I need to hire people that are smart in the areas I'm not. And that's really this key to success. The key to success is just do what you know you're good at. I'm a motivator. I'm an inspiration. I can tent. I can do PPF. I can go in the shop and I can grind and I can motivate the troops. And let's go and let's kick ass today. Oh uh, yeah. Well, you've, uh, you've done a great job and I, you know, I appreciate you sharing that motivation tonight with everybody on here because um, you know, for every reason we just spoke about, it's valuable to get this sort of information out there and tremendous. I think everybody's tremendously look, looking forward to the show because it's going to be fun. It's, um, it, it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be well produced. It's going to be cool. It's going to be good content. It's going to make you cry. Uh, it, it's 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 cool. It's going to have ups. It's going to have downs. It's going to have it's going to have it all, man. We're going to hit every string. Well, let's rock and roll. I can't wait to see it. And um, we will see each other and everyone else. I would imagine the next time the next group uh, gathering is Window Film Revolution in July. Yeah, you're going to be there. Yeah, Tintwiz has a booth, so we're definitely going to be there. We're not only going to be there, we're um, fortunate enough to be a sponsor of the event, looking forward to putting on hopefully a great booth experience. And then we'll be shortly after that, a couple months later, um, to some capacity, we'll be at the WFCT. Cool. So I love it. I can't wait. Up. Can't wait to give you my hug, man. You know, people I, always ask me, they go, Mike, you know, what can I get you? And I said, man, there's uh, nothing you can buy me except a hug. I said, give me a good hug, man. Just come in, give me one of the good hugs. And I'm happy, man. That's, uh, yeah, that's super, super nice. Super heartfelt. Cool. Well, thank, thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, it's been a long day. I'm very emotional today. I'm really on a high still for my son earlier yeah. getting his pilot. So I'm still yeah. kind of amped up a little bit. Well, congratulations all around, really, um, on everything you've done, everybody you've affected. And, of course, the, uh, you know, the big news from today. So thanks cool. for making Eric, time to come on here. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be on the show. Appreciate you having me. We'll do it again soon. Thanks, my man. Bye, Mike. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. Next week is maybe Miles from Dub, the founder of Dub Magazine and all the Dub brands, Dub Window Film and so on. And that'll be on Tuesday if we do it. We're trying to figure out a day. Week after that will be Patrick Fransco. will be coming back from VCon and discussing everything we experienced and learned and, and so on. And then the week after that will be Pat, uh, will be uh, Dean Mitchell, Pinterest for a Cause. We have a great uh, episode kind of concept planned for that as well. So um, a lot of Tint Wisdom coming up. And thank you for watching as always. I hope everyone has a great night.